I want to make a bit more of a straightforward tutorial today, so uh, I'm going to be talking about making lo-fi kind of resampled stuff. Let's get into it. Alright, so I'm going to give a quick example of what I'm trying to accomplish today. I got two examples. One is uh, resampled piano and the other is resampled strings. Both are uh, stock Ableton packs available with Live 10 Suite. Uh, they are the Grand Piano Pack and the Orchestral Strings Pack, respectively. Uh, so let's listen to uh, what we can do with them when we know what we're doing. Okay, so let's take a look at our original musical ideas. Uh, the first is a, is a piano, and the second is orchestral strings. And the strings. It's the same thing with strings, you get it. So where do we start? Let's start with the MIDI. And if you want this to be something that would feasibly be sampled off of a vinyl record, it would follow that what is on the vinyl record is something that a human actually played. So you want to be thinking about that when you're writing your sequence. Uh, some things you can do to make it sound a bit more human is, uh, well, first of all, it helps to like play the instrument that you are going to be resampling. I do play piano, so I thought about how I would actually, you know, play this on the keys. Uh, I also added some of these flams so that everything isn't, you know, exactly on grid. I also added a bit of randomization of the velocity so that every note isn't exactly the same velocity. That is kind of a dead giveaway that this is being played by a computer. Um, the next thing you want to make sure is that you have an extra bar here. Not necessarily an extra bar, but some extra space. Uh, so you see I have, it ha have the length here set to 9 bars. Uh, and the clip itself is actually just 8 bars long, so there's a bit that's cut off. And what you want to do is you want to put a little a note here. I'm actually going to turn the, uh, the little headphone icon here off so we don't have to listen to every note that I put down. So put a note here. You'll see why that's important in a second. Uh, next, you're going to want to switch to a triplet grid, which I already happen to be in a triplet grid. Uh, create a little triplet, triplet here. Highlight that triplet. And then hit this times two button up here until this triplet spans the entire length of our musical idea. The next thing you want to do is hit Command A. To select everything, and you'll see there's this little tab up here in the top right corner. This allows you to kind of restretch your MIDI. Um, next, you want to deselect your triplet here, and you want to grab that tab and move everything until that last note that you just put there is in line with the last. Uh, hit of the triplet. So what we've effectively done is taken our musical idea and made it two-thirds of its original length. Next we're going to delete all of this, uh, all of these, you know, triplets and, and bookmark type mini notes we've put in there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit command A and we're going to tune everything up a perfect fifth. So I'm just going to hit the up arrow key seven times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now everything has been tuned up a perfect fifth. Next, what we want to do is resample our musical idea. So you can see I have an audio track open here. Uh, it is set to resampling. Uh, so when I solo our piano, 
uh, hit record arm here and then record this, it's just gonna resample everything to audio. Alternatively, you can freeze and flatten this, but I feel this is just easier with my workflow. So let's go ahead and record this. Beautiful. Next, let's open up this audio clip. And the first thing we want to do is unwarp it. Now we are going to transpose everything down a perfect fifth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now let's think a little bit about what we've done here. We've taken a musical idea in MIDI, we've shrunk it to two thirds its length, and then transposed it up a perfect fifth. And it just so happens that the ratio of a perfect fifth to its root is two thirds. So when we shrink it two thirds its length, transpose it up a perfect fifth, resample it to audio, and then transpose that audio down um, a perfect fifth, we get what is effectively very, very similar, not exactly the same, but effectively very, very similar to our original musical idea. So if we listen back to it, Now, this is really the core of what makes it sound resampled, but there are a few other things we can do to subtly hint that this has been sampled off of a vinyl record, even though it hasn't. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in a group, and I'm going to add another audio track in the group. Uh, in this audio track, I am going to put some vinyl crackle. Now, for experienced Ableton users, you might be familiar that vinyl distortion has this kind of crackle type sound to it. I would highly advise against using it because it sounds very, very artificial. It's kind of one of those things when I hear it in a track, I go, ah, that's that Ableton, that's that fake ass Ableton uh, vinyl distortion thing. So, you know, get something that sounds a bit more natural. I got mine off of freesounds.org. You can see it's right here. Um, and I happen to know that this one has these like bumps in it, you can hear. And they have a bit too much low end for my taste, so I'm just going to get an EQ8 and scoop those out. I'm also going to turn this down significantly because that's a bit too loud. So let's listen back. Oh, my bad. I just meant to... Now we're getting closer, but it still kind of just sounds like we layered a crackle sound on top of this resampled piano. Uh, so what I want to do is kind of glue these sounds together, and we're going to use the vinyl distortion, oddly enough even though I just told you not to use it. But we're not going to be using that, that crackle feature of it. In fact, I'm just going to use um, a, a preset called Vinyl, which kind of makes it sound a little like vinyl. And I'm going to turn the crackle down a bit more. last thing we're going to do to make this sound a bit more like a vinyl is uh, use the frequency shifter to kind of give it that um, repitching kind of sound. If you've ever, uh, if you've ever like listened to a vinyl record and you like put your finger on the record as it's spinning, you'll notice that it, it does this like ew, 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 kind of repitching thing. And we're going to mimic that with the, with the frequency shifter. So the first thing we want to do is set the phase, which is in the bottom left-hand corner here, to zero. And then turn the LFO 
and sample hold amount up to about three hertz is enough, I think. And now let's listen back to it. we go. Uh, that is everything you need to uh, get the initial sound. You take all the same steps with the strings, it's exactly the same. Uh, but one thing that I want to point out about my original example, which I have over here, is this kind of chopped sound that it has. Uh, if you listen to old like J. Dilla beats or something like that, he does a lot of these um, you know, uh, taking the samples, chopping them up into sections and, and rearranging them or repeating them. And that's what really gives it, if you're going for like a hip hop kind of thing, that's if, if that's not what you're going for, then by all means you don't have to do this, but I find it really adds to uh, that aesthetic goal. So you can see like sections that were repeated. And the same goes with the strings. Hope you found this helpful. Uh, it's a technique I like to use a lot just to give breathe a little bit more life into my tracks. So uh, if you liked it, please subscribe, subscribe, and also subscribe, subscribe.